Chapter J, Collisions. Collisions are a cool application of the physics we've been studying so far. With collisions, we can have an elastic collision, in the ideal sense, kinetic energy is then conserved along with momentum. Or we can have the inelastic collision where some of the kinetic energy goes into heat or some other form we lose some kinetic energy, but momentum will be conserved. We're gonna look at, for example, two masses, two balls, where one ball is traveling to hit the other ball and then there's a collision. And then we'll look at the case where the two balls are moving. So there's a considerable amount of algebra with some of these calculations, but we'll go through it and I'll show you a shortcut and how to do uh, the case where the two balls are moving. And then we'll look at the ballistic pendulum where a mass gets embedded into another mass that then rises a certain height. And then you can figure out what the speed is of that initial uh, projectile. In the old days, they used this method to measure the velocity of a bullet. So we'll do that kind of a problem also. Let's get on with collisions. J zero, inelastic, and elastic collision. Now we're gonna revisit the skaters from the previous chapter where one skater was skating to the right the other was at rest and then the skater coming from the left jumped on the back of the skater and together they move at the same velocity together so the conservation of momentum for that problem was M1, U1, U1 is the velocity of the person coming in from the left. And the second person is not moving, so that's the total momentum. And then when they move together, the two masses move together at velocity V. This is the equation for conservation of momentum. Now I would like to show you that here, this collision does not have a conservation of kinetic energy. Yeah, momentum's conserved, so we have that, but watch what happens with kinetic energy. The kinetic energy before the interaction is here one half m one u one squared. Now afterwards they're both moving together so the collision after, so the kinetic energy after is one half the mass times the velocity squared of mass is M1 plus M2, the combined mass, and then we have velocity squared. So to compare, we're going to use this top equation where we solve for the velocity afterwards. By dividing by the sum of the masses. And then this is going to go in for the velocity at the after situation. So here when we do that, we're going to get for the kinetic energy after that's going to be one half We're going to have m1 plus m2, and then this gets squared. So that means we'll have m1 squared, u1 squared, divided by m1 plus m2 squared. Now we'll get a cancellation of one factor of m1 plus m2 and the kinetic energy after will be one half. The numerator here will be 
m1 squared u1 squared, and that's going to be divided by m1 plus m2. Now to compare these, what we're going to do is we're going to divide the ratio. So what is the kinetic energy after divided by the kinetic energy before? And this will give us one half this here, and one squared u one squared over and one plus m two. And all this gets divided by one half and one u one squared. Now you can see here the halves cancel out, and you're gonna get the u1 squares cancel out. These here are going to go. And one of the m1s will divide into the m1 squared to leave an m1. And then you have m1 plus m2. And you can see this is less than 1. So the kinetic energy afterwards is, is less than what you started with before. So that collision is then considered an inelastic collision. And let's go ahead and plug in some numbers from the problem from the previous chapter. So after kinetic energy divided by the before kinetic energy, which is equal to the ratio of M1 and the sum of the masses, what we had before, we had M1 50 kilograms and we had m2 as 75 kilograms and the ratio will have no units it'll cancel out so here if you divide the top equation by 25 if you divide the top by 25 and the bottom by 25 this is 2 over 2 plus 3 so the answer is Two fifths. So that means you have 40% of the kinetic energy left. So you lost, you lost a lot. Now let's check this formula with some extreme cases. Remember in our problem we have someone coming in from the left. This is before and then afterwards you have both moving together. So you have, this is the U1 coming in here, U2 is zero. And then here are the final velocities, V1 and V2 equal to V. So suppose, uh, suppose that the, suppose that the first mass here is very, very small. In other words, we take the limit as the first mass goes to zero of this ratio. Well, if the first mass goes to zero, you're gonna get zero over zero plus N2, which is zero. So that means if the first mass is very, very small, that when that connects up with the other mass is going to stop. And the second mass is just two mass that's not going to budge at all. Like if, if you imagine a, like a fly flying into the other person, just land on the other person, doesn't, you know, the other person doesn't move and the fly comes to rest. So suppose that we have the situation where, suppose we have the situation where the second person is very, very light compared to the, the first person. So that would mean the limit as M2 goes to zero. You know, or you can think of the limit as M1 that goes to infinity. Either way is gonna work. M1 plus M2. That's going to be M1 
over m1 plus 0, which is 1. In other words, if the, if the second person here is very, very light, the first person will just grab that and, and they'll go on with the speed of the first person. And that's the same result that you would get if the first incoming mass went to infinity. So if we did that, just to show you another way, this would be the limit as M1 goes to infinity. Remember our trick? Divide top and bottom by the, the number that's going to get large. M1 over M1 plus M2 over M1. So this here will be the limit as M1 goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus M2 over M1. And as M1 goes off to infinity, this is going to then be 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. So what this is saying is that the kinetic energy stays the same. In other words, the person's coming in with kinetic energy and just going to pick up, you know, the other person's negligible, in other words, in terms of the mass. So this is a nice little limits to look at. Just make sure that your answer is, you know, making, making sense. And here we're thinking of the kinetic energy. Uh, before we did it with like the velocity, but this is kinetic energy. So if we look at our definitions we have for an elastic elastic collision we have the kinetic energy the kinetic energy is conserved no change and in an inelastic collision we have the kinetic energy not conserved in both cases, energy, like total energy is conserved because when there's a the collision and a kinetic energy is lost, it goes into other forms of energy, like uh, the body you know, absorbs it, for example, in that case. So here we're talking about the kinetic energy. And when the two masses get connected, like the case we're studying here, if they get connected like this, we say that it's a perfectly inelastic collision. It's also used the terminology there.